the case. I... Yep. Switched back here. So what's the summary of today? So this course this started ALF on days one and two, which is just about using Python. And that works in Jupyter Lab, in the cloud, wherever. But as we're going on, we're moving further and further towards how Python interacts with the operating system itself. So basically, we're seeing how you would break out of the Jupyter Notebooks and be able to run these other, um, like run things on your computer, run it without Jupyter, run it more times, be able to share your code, things like this. And these are the kind of things which are needed to go to the next level. So someone, like there is plenty of work that can be done only within the Jupyter web interface, but many of you probably need to at least know of these concepts of how to go out. Even if it's someone else you're working in with, working with that's managing these kinds of things. So there's feedback which is coming here. Um, please answer. I see right now there's 86 people who are still on the stream, and this is not many answers. So please vote for what you think. Okay, um, hmm. so the news for tomorrow. So there's one lesson tomorrow which uses the command line and it's actually about packaging. So it's basically how you can make a package which can itself go on the pip or conda repositories and then other people can use it. But it doesn't have to go that far. I oftentimes make things into packages but I install it directly from GitHub because the use isn't really that much and I'm just using it internally myself. So the topics are more advanced, but also you can do things. There's the first lesson can be done only through Jupyter Lab and the third one. So these have good exercises, which other people can do also. Um, also, at the end, we have a panel discussion where you can basically ask all of us, all of us instructors, anything you may want. Like, what do you recommend for this case or that case, and so on. And in fact, you can ask some good questions and, um, you know, try to get us debating each other about what's the right answer. Or maybe there is no clear right answer. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so sometimes um, programmers are a bit like lawyers. It depends. Yeah, and, and often, like like I think it happens uh, quite often in, in, in the Python ecosystem that it's basically like once you do, if you start your studies and you start your bachelor's and, and that sort of thing, and you have a, you have your um, friends in the same courses and you're all working on the same courses and you do the same things because, because those are the basics and basically the NumPy and, and Pandas and those sort of things, Matplotlib, they are the basics when it comes to scientific computing with Python. Those are like where everybody goes. But then it quite quickly diverges into different fields. Like different fields have different needs and different tools they use. Like neuroimaging, they need to do 3D plotting of, let's say, like uh, of, of, of MRI slices or something like that. And, and if you do like deep learning, you do completely different tools. And, and of course, the ecosystem is still the same and everybody's working the same kind of things. But the problems become more specialized and specific for the field. And that makes it, of course, hard to like give a general answer what is what is good. But what we can hopefully provide is is some uh, semblance of like there are these kinds of like tools that uh, go across all of these different fields. There are tools that are like ecosystem tools and these kinds of things that that help you or, or processes like packaging in a certain way or that help you maybe. Uh, even if you're working in a very specific field, 
but of course like every every field has their own uh, special cases that m might be complicated or certain kinds of like plotting a certain kind of thing and and you need to like yeah it's it's a different uh, like specific question at that field of course Yeah, there's some good comments here about today being advanced and getting stuck. And yeah, I mean, this this is unfortunately something that happens sometimes. Um, we have such a broad audience here. We try to do something that's a little bit interesting for advanced people. And for people who get stuck, you can still watch it and take it as a demo and then learn more yourself later. Because I think that's the only way to manage such a wide um or such a wide audience. Yeah, and, and like there are different ways of working in different like systems. So so for example, like many of the things might be that we go to a terminal and in windows you don't usually work with a terminal that often like you don't necessarily use that mm -hmm. much of it uh, um, but you the working environment might be uh, different but in windows let's say you use vs code or something like you might have a pie charm or something and they can replicate the the like with an ide you can get even better working environment than with a with a terminal in many cases like like you would do maybe in a, in a Linux system. So there are different like ways of working. So there's no like right answer. It is only answer that like you, you want to choose from. So if you encounter problems with say, let's say environment creation or some of the like command line things or scripting or these kind of things like PyCharm and VS code, you can give arguments to run when you run, like press the green button to run like a code, you can give it arguments to run like it would run as a script so you can basically demo how it would behave as a script even when you're not using terminal and this is quite common uh, in in the ide world so so there's different ways of working with the same things yeah. uh, but but of course like when we present it we present it with the way that we most commonly see uh, in our users which is like using the command lines of scripts and that sort of thing yeah. but the same things can apply to like different workflows as well yeah. So we're over time if there's no more comments from anyone. Maybe I'd wrap up with this one comment at the bottom. I like this course. It gives a good overview of good coding practices, but the course requires weeks of hands-on practice to learn. And I'd say that's absolutely true. And for a 12-hour course, and I think any one of the lessons we teach could easily become a 12-hour course just on their own. And our goal here is to show you what's possible and give you a little bit of hands-on practice of what's there, but to inspire you to go learn these later on. And you can learn them by doing yourself reading more or probably more likely working with other people that do things and finding it together. If you're at any of the universities that have partners, you can try asking the people that are advertising the course and see if they can provide support in these things. At Alta University, we do plenty of this. And I know the people in uh, Sweden and Norway are very happy to help you with these kinds of things. So with that being said, should we um, should we wrap up? Oh, I think so. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, see you attending. tomorrow, same time. And yes, thank you. Bye.